yes, you read that title right. This is not clickbait. I have the receipts. Let's get into this. Hey there, my name is Emily from Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, I want to welcome you to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. Today's video is actually in collaboration with Karenique's Corner. Karenique is another YouTube mama who has amazing content, and she will also be making a video today on a message to her younger self. So make sure to go and check her video out after watching this one. So I think I need to begin this video by saying regret is a very strong word to describe my academic success. I definitely don't regret all of the benefits that came with getting straight A's. There were a lot of them, but I do regret my approach to schooling for so many years and how it really affected me as an individual. So that is what I'm going to be focusing on today. But if you want to know more about the benefits of getting straight A's, I can do a video on that too. So in a short and sweet version, my message to my younger self is that B's stand for balance and A's stand for anxiety. <laughs> so at a really young age, I loved order. I always wanted to be the best at anything I did. And I would often find myself like playing school with my brothers and just, I love the school environment, but I also hated portions of it. As early as the third grade, I was stressing about who would be my teacher because the person I was assigned was apparently the hard one. And I was like, how, I'm, how am I gonna succeed in her class? And then with group projects, I found myself taking on more than what I was supposed to because I wanted to ensure that I got the best grade possible. And that's really stressful when you have a lot going on and when you're still trying to learn the dynamics of how to work with other people. I also remember in middle school was the first time that there was a B on my report card. Now, I didn't actually earn the B. I actually earned an A. And there was a mix up because my teacher had put someone who was either directly above me or below me in the roster, like put their grade in my slot. And I had had like an A plus or something going into the final. I would have had to get like a zero on my test in that category to get anything lower than an A. And so instead of my first reaction being like, this can't be right, you know, like I obviously know more than 0% of the subject on the test. Instead of thinking that and just kind of shrugging it off and addressing my teacher, I was in my room sobbing for like hours. I was so crushed because I had this imperfection on my report card. And my mom eventually called the teacher and said, is this really, you know, what happened? And the teacher was like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake and they fixed it. But that was my first taste of what it would feel like to get a B, even though I didn't actually earn the B. And I hated it. And that I think maybe influenced me even going forward of like, I need this perfection. I can't mess this up because it's gonna feel horrible. And so at the beginning of nearly every semester of high school, of college, of grad school, I would like cry. I would come home crying after seeing my syllabus, after seeing what was expected of me. And I would be crying out of anxiety because of how much I was overwhelmed with how much I had to get done in order to secure an A at the end of that semester. And I, I hated that feeling. And, you know, I managed to get an A in those semesters, but it was, it was a horrible experience to have all of that anxiety on my shoulders just for an end result. And so, I was focusing so much on that perfect record at the end of a semester that I really didn't focus on the journey of actually getting there. Not just on the experiences that came with schooling and meeting friends and all of that, but I also feel like I cared more about the grade and less about how much I really walked away feeling like I learned. Now, obviously, to get an A in a class, I have to exhibit some amount of knowledge learned or knowledge mastered, but there may have been students who got Bs, who learned way more than I did, who retained more than I did, and ultimately had a better learning experience 
they just got a worse grade. Maybe they didn't do some homework assignments and they just didn't care, but they understood the information. And that wasn't so much my focus. And I think at some point I did recognize that and you know, told myself, well, I still want to be able to learn this stuff, but I also want that A. I never really dropped that feeling of like, I need to get an A this semester, no matter what. And then came the additional anxiety in college when an A minus wasn't equivalent to a 4.0. An A plus in my undergrad and master's program, an A plus was considered a 4.0. It wasn't anything above. So it wasn't gonna even out an A minus if I were to get one. And so not only did I have the pressure of, I want to get straight A's, I also had the additional pressure of, I want to keep my 4.0, which meant I couldn't get an A minus. I either needed an A or an A plus to secure my perfect record. And that was so much more pressure that I put on myself and made the overall experience so much less enjoyable. Now I'm gonna preface this next little kind of category um, by saying I do suffer from depression and anxiety, and with that comes thoughts that normally maybe I wouldn't think of, or you know, are kind of darker thoughts, or I don't know, some more temptation thoughts, or I don't I don't know how to describe it, but they're not always the you know, prettiest of thoughts. And so at one point in my college career, I was reflecting on how badly I wanted to get straight A's. And the thought occurred to me, it's not like I willed it to come into my head, but it occurred to me like, what if an instructor, because I'm in college, I'm of age, what if an instructor tried to take advantage of my like desire for straight A's and say that I would need to do certain favors for him in order to get an A. That thought came to my mind and I was like, gosh, w would I be one of those students that would, you know, do stuff for just like a letter grade for an A? So I'd like to think that if that situation ever did come up, thankfully it did not, I would like to think that I would have happily accepted a lower grade and kept my like self-worth um, as a priority over getting straight A's. And that also had to do with the fact that I was saving myself for marriage. That played a big part in that decision as well. Um, but like I said, I'd like to think that I would have chosen a lower grade and not fall into that temptation of just doing whatever it would take to get an A. But pretty much, getting straight A's defined me as a person. And I really needed to learn to value myself and see me for more than just a straight A student. Because whether I liked it or not, that moment was going to come eventually. I mean, I'm not in school anymore. And for so many years of my life, I was a student. I was a straight A student. And with that being a defining aspect of who I was, when you're done with school, that's gonna go away. You're not really gonna get letter grades at your job or if you are a stay-at-home parent, you don't get those grades. So, you know, you kind of lose your identity. And if you can begin to value yourself for more than just one tiny aspect of your schooling career, that is going to be a big stepping stone in, you know, giving up that identity as just being a student in general. So it's better to deal with that identity issue before you have an identity crisis when you're out of school into the real world and you're trying to figure out what life is like not being a student anymore. Now, if you looked at the title, you saw that I got straight A's for 21 years. Now, I didn't include kindergarten, and I kind of factored in the other types of grading systems in elementary school. But even with that taken into account, I was in school longer than 21 years. There was one time in my life where I earned a B in a class. It was a B plus in my statistical regression class, I think. 
and it was an elective course that like one of the electives that I could have chosen to take in my PhD grad school program and one of the things that kind of pesters me about that is it all came down to our final exam I knew that I had to do within a certain range to secure an A in the class and the instructor had said I guess I'm venting here and maybe I need to get this off my chest the instructor had said a certain topic wasn't going to be on the final and then it randomly was on the final. And we were like, you kind of told us not to study about this, not to worry about this, and now we're being tested on it. it. Wasn't really fair, so maybe I could have done a little bit better in that class had that little thing not come up. But either way, I am very glad that it happened. I moved out to Arizona, away from my family, and into this grad school program with the mentality of, I need to drop this straight A stressing. I am in the final level of schooling that I plan on doing. I don't plan on getting more PhDs. I don't plan on getting more degrees. This is my end result. And after this, people really care if you just graduate and if you write good research papers. So I went into the program with more of an openness to not getting a perfect score. My first semester out there, I got straight A's and there was a part of me that was like, man, if I had just gotten a B, it would have taken off the stress for the rest of the program and, you know, I could enjoy it better. And there was a part of me that was like mad I got a perfect record my first semester. But my second semester there and my only semester there, my only semester in my schooling, did I receive this B plus in a class. And rather than breaking down like I did in middle school, I was like, you know what? B stands for balance. During that first year of my schooling, I was going to church events. I was making new friends. I was having people over to my apartment and just having little house parties. I was exploring and growing as an individual and that was okay. So I decided to celebrate my B by throwing a B party. And I had tried so hard to find the evidence, the photos, and with all of our moves and stuff, I kind of feel like it, it got lost somewhere. But I had bacon, I had bagel bites, I had like roasted broccoli, I had, you name it with, with a B, I tried to have it there. And I just tried to make the best of what I was worried was gonna be a heartbreaking situation. I didn't want my grades to define me anymore. And I wanted just to celebrate my imperfections because everybody is imperfect. And this was a perfect example of, of that. And I just wanted to celebrate my human nature. So if you are a parent out there of a child who is an overachiever and a perfectionist and stressed out about their grades, you know probably that they're gonna try their best no matter what. And so if you have someone in your life that is like me, I highly suggest trying to make the best of the situation and throw them a bee party. <laughs> Try to make light of it and say, look, you tried your best and we are still proud of you and we're gonna celebrate you just for that, for trying your best and throw them a bee party. And it may not really help when they're little, but it may be a good transition for them beginning to value themselves outside of just their grades. So if I were to summarize my message to my younger self, it would be to not just focus on your academic grades. Obviously those are important for succeeding in life, in getting you know, into the next schooling program, maybe getting scholarships, things like that. Definitely try your best, but if those are the only grades that you're considering, uh, you might want to start trying to balance that out. Consider grading yourself in other areas of your life. If quality relationships and friendships, quality time with family is important to you, then give those a grade. Grade yourself on your extracurricular activities. Are you doing nothing? Well, that would probably be like a D or an F. If your relationship with your family is really bad and sketchy, maybe you can focus some more time on that and bring up that grade. And if you're like me and really struggle to feel like you've had your own solid quality group of friends, maybe that's somewhere where you're lacking as well. 
And so maybe getting a B in a class, in an academic class, to bring up your grade that you're grading yourself on other qualities of your life, if that it helps balance out your life, then ultimately you're preparing yourself for success in the long run better than you would if you just focused on academics. So all this being said, if you guys want me to do a video on the ways I kind of set myself up for success in college specifically, um, or maybe even some of the younger years, I can do a video on that. Let me know if you wanna see that in the comments. But I hope that this video provides some clarification on people who are like me, perfectionists, and people who really put their self-worth in this artificial kind of piece and small piece of their life. If you liked this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That will be like my A for this video. You can give me a thumbs down too, because that actually helps out my channel. If you are new here and want to check out more of my motherhood content, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around and just see all that I have to offer. And I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.